touch is an amazing thing. From the feeling that you get when you touch someone else to the feeling that you get when someone else touches you. There is a beauty in touch. In fact, research from social psychologist Mark Knapp at the University of Texas at Austin and Judith Hall at Northeastern University believe that touch and tactile communication is probably the most primitive or basic form of communication we have. In many ways, our first input of what life is going to be like comes from a sense of touch and being touched. How many people here like to be touched in a positive way? Cool. Do you ever feel like you're losing touch? I'm talking about the good, healthy effects of positive touch. 27% of Americans now live alone. Single people now outnumber married people. In fact, for the first time in the US ever, single women now outnumber married women. More people are working remotely for their jobs. And in our ever digitized world, things like personal connections are now less and less personal. Even things like FaceTime are no longer about actually being face to face. And in our fast paced, digitally connected, but personally disconnected world, we are losing touch. We're losing physical touch and the benefits of what physical touch does for us as beings. Do you ever feel like this? Or maybe like you just need a hug? Well, what about the lack of touch? John Bowlby and Renee Spitz, who observed children orphaned in World War II, and Harry Harlow, who worked with primates, and Nathan Fox, who screened babies at six orphanages in Bucharest after the fall of Romanian dictator Nicolae Ceausescu, found that the lack of touch can have negative effects on physical development brain development, and emotional development, resulting in things like aggression, depression, even self-injury and death. In fact, Harry Harlow's studies with primates were considered so cruel and devastating in their long-term effects using isolation and withholding touch that they were the impetus for the animal liberation movement in the US. But what about positive touch? When I was younger, I worked at a nursery intensive care as a volunteer. I saw critically ill babies fighting for their lives. So very often a parent was there, stroking their child's head, gently pushing the hair to the side. That act of touch was so powerful for both the parent and the child. What I learned was when you can't do anything else for someone, you can touch. In fact, Tiffany Field, a leader in the field of touch from the Touch Research Institute found that preterm newborn babies that were given just three 15-minute sessions of touch therapy a day for five to 10 days gained 47% more weight than preterm newborns that received just standard medical treatment. Even in sports, touch can be shown to have a positive effect. Dr. Keltner, of the UC Department of Psychology, UC Berkeley Department of Psychology, and a study group were able to correctly predict better outcomes in the 2008-2009 NBA season for those teams whose athletes touched each other frequently in positive ways. Teams that did things like chest bumps, high fives, hugs, huddles, even slapping each other on the butt most often early in the season, had better seasons. Whether it's holding hands, a gentle kneading massage, or a hug, it releases good healthy hormones like oxytocin, 
serotonin and dopamine while reducing bad hormones like cortisol. But it's not always acceptable to ask a stranger for a hug or for someone to hold your hand. But there are ways that you can pay for the positive effects of touch. Some of them are legal. <laughs> Some of them are illegal. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. How many people here have ever had their hair done by someone else? At least once? Is there anyone who hasn't? Did you ever wonder why being touched and groomed feels so good? Well, when it comes to your scalp and the nape of your neck, they're erogenous zones. Your scalp is covered in receptive nerve endings, making it very susceptible to the touch. And on a regular basis, it's rarely touched by anyone else. I can tell you as a hairdresser, there are some times at the shampoo sink when the guest's scalp is being massaged while the hair is being shampooed, that the sounds that they are vocalizing could get at least an NC-17 rating. <laughs> Did you ever realize that being touched and groomed is one of the seven most common experiences in the world? Being born, breathing, drinking water, eating, sleeping, dying. Now that's only six. What I think number seven is, is being touched and groomed. When primates sit in groups, what do they do? They do each other's hair. And it's not because one of them owns a salon. Though the one in the center looks like it might be practicing for that. Did you notice? So he's a little into it. There are indigenous tribes that have never worn shirts or socks, but they do each other's hair. It doesn't matter when you were born in time, the color of your skin, the amount of money you make, the continent you were born on, whether you are male or female. Everybody's had their hair done, been touched and groomed by someone else at least once. It doesn't matter what the style or the fashion or how digitized our world becomes, being touched and groomed is one of the oldest ways that we care for each other and connect. It not only makes us feel good, it makes us look good. That's why they're called beauty shops, not ugly shops. <laughs> From shampooing of your hair to the rubbing of your feet and everything legally in between from a massage therapist, getting touched is one of the best ways that you can reconnect. It doesn't matter how digitized our world becomes, what is the fashion or the style, being groomed is a personal and physical connection between two people. It requires touch and being touched. So the next time in our fast-paced, digitally connected, but personally disconnected world, you feel stressed, overwhelmed, or disconnected, remember. One of the best ways to reconnect is to get touched. From the top of your head to the tip of your toes. Take the time. Find someone you like. Find someone you love. Find a friend. Get touched. And if that friend happens to be a beauty professional, you'll not only feel good, you'll look better too. That's the beauty of touch. Thank you.